This is the situation that we are usually uh, presented with in our accounting problems. Uh, out at some time in the future here, we usually know a cash flow of some sort. We either get a cash payable or a cash receivable. And what we have to do is discount that future value out here back to the present value and what it's worth today. So either we're given an interest rate or if we aren't given an interest rate, we're, we're actually given the present value here. But we usually don't have both the interest rate and the present value. So we're going to look here at um, uh, the present value versus internal rate of return for calculating both of these. So looking at the first situation here, uh, say we have a uh, future value here, we got some known amount here that we're going to pay or receive. So let's look at it. Let's say it was $4,000. And we want to go back here and calculate the present value. And we know the interest rate. Interest rate is 10%. So what we're going to do is just go up and look at an Excel formula or something that we can put into our calculator here. So just our little sketch shows here we have a cash flow out here in at the end of year four it's four thousand dollars so here we calculate out the present value so let's just go up here and look at the uh, uh, function that we use in Excel and it would be similar sim similar for a calculator so here we're given the discount rate and that's the interest rate that we discount that future value back to and we know the number of periods and then we know the cash flow. In this case we have a future cash flow so you have to remember to put the payment at zero and then the future cash flow gets fed in here and the type that would be end of a period type. So that would be looking at our present value, determining our present value knowing the interest rate. All right. This would be the same scenario as far as our future cash flow, either receivable or payable out here, say it was $4,000. But in this case, we do not know what our interest rate is here to discount this a $4,000 back to its a pr a present value. But we do know what the present value is. In this case, it was $2,700. And here we would have to determine our interest rate. So this is where we'd use the internal rate of return formula. And I have it out here for the uh, Excel formula, same for a calculator. Here's our $4,000 payment or receivable out here. And then put, uh, here's our negative or flow here, $2,700 here. You have to close it in brackets so you get the right number. Then after putting it in that formula, it comes up at 10.33%. So here we determined our interest rate based on a future um, cash flow that we knew and know in here and then we also knew the present value and this is important because usually in our problems we have to know both the interest rate and the present value. Okay this is a situation where we would have annuity type payments so we have equal payments say at the end of each year here for four years and we want to discount those back to their present value here so in this say this we got the scenario here where we're given the interest rate and we have to calculate the present value so looking up here we look at our payments here we got payments at the end of each of the four years then when we um, we use our present value formula we can calculate our present value here so here would be our present value formula for like an Excel calculator or Excel program so we're given our discount rate here number of periods and the cash flow. And just remember here when you're putting in um, the rate, the number of periods, you'd put them in here for your payment in your Excel uh, formula. All right, here's a situation where we've got these annuity payments. And say we've got the four payments, they're at the end of the year, and we want to discount them back and determine the present value. But we do not know the interest rate. This is an unknown at this point. But we do know the present value. And we know the payments, what their value is here as well. So let's go and calculate that interest rate. And this is where we would um, use the internal rate of re 
return formula for Excel. So we would put our payments in here and then remember um, whatever our cash flow, our present value is, you can close it in parentheses so you can determine the internal rate of return. In this case we determined that interest rate to be 9.56 percent. So here we had the present value and we knew what our payments were in the annuity form and there we calculated our interest rate. Okay, in summary we had to either determine our interest rate or calculate our present value here of some future cash flows. So in the first situation here we knew what our interest rate was so we could discount these cash flows back here and we'd calculate our present value of those cash flows, what they're worth in today's dollars. And in this case we use our present value function here either in Excel or in our on our calculator. So here was our discount rate which was our interest rate and then a number of periods and then the cash flows. And in the second situation again we knew what our future cash flows were but we didn't know what our interest rate was to discount them back. And in this case we have to know what our present value is of those cash flows. That would be a situation where you, you buy something or loan something out here and then you expect some cash flows, either receipts or payments out here and they're known. So in this case we'd go and calculate our interest rate using the internal rate of return function. Again either in our calculator or in Excel. And just a note up here when you've got your cash flows you have to differentiate differentiate rather they're positive or negative so and a negative one here I just put the back brackets around the positive ones they just stand as is. So that's a summary here of uh, what we do for calculating our interest rate or calculating our present value of a series of or a known future cash flows.